Previews World. It's Wednesday. It's New Comic Book Day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I'm one of your hosts, George Jeffrey Allen. I'm your other host, Ashton Greenwood, a.k.a. the Duchess of Free Comic Book Day. Um, I'm going to just... Sorry. <laughs> I just realized, I was like, okay, I know i got more hair than I used to have, but, you know. I'm, like, insanely old and also out of focus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ashton needs to be focused. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, no. We don't have Johnny today. We're suffering already. Yeah. We started late. I don't have the mic on properly because I can't be trusted to mic myself up. Why are you doing some weird Wolverine thing? Okay. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we'll try that again. What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday. It's a new <laughs> comic book day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I'm one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey I'm Allen. I'm your other host, Ashton Greenwood, a.k.a. the Duchess of Free Comic Book Day, a.k.a. Out of Focus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Uh, I'm going to take the reins for a second talk about Free Comic Book Day because okay. we got some stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, Kodansha canceled one of their books. This is like yeah, I a saw thing. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they were going to do a Miraculous Ladybug and Cat Noir book as one of their gold titles. And it was also going to be a lovely Muko sampler, just a cute little doggy book. Um, but unfortunately, due to delays, they won't be able to get it in stores in time to get it into hands for Free Comic Book Day. So they had to bag it. Okay. Which, but. I mean, uh, but rather they know that they're not going to get it out in time. <laughs> right. <laughs> then wait till May to tell it. <laughs> <laughs> the week of. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Uh, okay, so if you were looking forward to that one, I'm sorry, but maybe it'll be. It, it was a preview, so if you're still interested in that graphic novel, that graphic novel will be available later this year. So keep your hopes up. Don't let us dash your dreams. Exactly. What else is going on for Recon Book Day? Uh, really bad. Should I try putting it on my jacket? <laughs> yes, please. I, I sincerely hope Johnny's not watching because we're embarrassing him right now. <laughs> Apologies for the audio there, guys. Uh, sorry to Johnny specifically yeah. for ruining your show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay, TCG Player. Yeah, what is it? It is a technology platform in the collectibles industry that allows you to uh, buy and sell Trading cards was how they started. They're now kind of getting into the comic book game with single issues and trades, okay. but basically just like an e-commerce platform to be able to get your hands on some cool collectibles. Okay. So they're pr are presenting sponsor for Free Comic Book Day, uh, and they'll be, you know, they'll be doing some cool in-store stuff, and they'll be on our promo materials. And we're still kind of working on what this campaign looks like, but we're super excited to be kind of playing in the sandbox with them. Yeah, that's a little bit different for us, right? Yeah. In terms of sponsors, all right, cool. And as always, reminder. May 6th. May 6th. Yes. May 6th. May 6th. I'll see you at your local comic shop. Every comic shop, like Santa Claus. Every <laughs> single comic shop, absolutely. <laughs> you know, Johnny had this really great idea about a live stream for the day. We still need to talk about that because maybe people will see you at their comic shop. That's true. That's something we can talk about. Um, meanwhile, over on the previews world mm -hmm. side, new catalog. Check that out. Nice. Yes. Um, yes. So this month, of course, is the February catalog, which means it's for items dropping in April. And I just want to point out, actually, if we have a... Riley, can you click on the cover image for... Right there. There you go. Mm. Yeah. The Mighty Barbarian. So I actually just found out about this book last week, because fortunately, because uh, of who we work for, we know it's going to be on the catalog at least a week before, if not more. <laughs> yeah. And so this is kind of neat, right? It's basically all the fantasy heroes coming together as like a superhero Avenger type thing. You know what I mean? And so Morgan Le Fay forms his team and like it's got like some of the public domain characters in the mix as well. So these are okay. actually characters you've heard of if you're really big into fantasy. Uh, it's called The Mighty Barbarians. Okay. It's from a blaze by Michael Morecci, uh, who's been doing a lot of stuff lately. Like in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, he's been kind of like the go-to guy. Uh, he's also did a book called Barbaric. Uh, mm, uh -huh. uh, yeah, which is also very much in his vein. But he also does a lot of sci-fi stuff as well. We really, we really need to address this polar bear. The polar bear? There's a polar bear on the front cover. It is squaring up with those snakes. Oh, you know what? I didn't even How? notice that. How did you? That was the first thing I saw. I didn't even notice that. What is that polar bear? About? I guess <laughs> you had to read Mighty Barbarians to find out. I don't know. Um, on the flip side, I want to point out, so... All right, James Tinian, right? We like mm -hmm. James Tinian. We do. Here. Like, he did Something is Killing Children. We did a whole episode mm -hmm. about Something is Killing Children. Um, 
I noticed last year he went down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole. In a good way <laughs> or bad way? Well, I, well, look. So he posted about his unease with technology. So Valid. So in a good way as far as we're concerned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and welcome. <laughs> welcome to the club, James. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we are seeing the end result of that with this book. Uh, this is on the reverse cover, which is called World Tree. And so, yeah. Oh! Hey, that's a cool cyberpunk cover. Bro, I love that cover. That's yeah. awesome. Um, it's a new series uh, by him from Image Comics, and uh, it's going to expose the true internet, the internet mm. underneath the internet. Mm, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> yeah, he might be. He might not want to know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, check that out. Also, I want to point out there's a Modoc diorama figure on the cover that DST is releasing. Oh yeah. Uh, that is also kind of a lot of fun, especially for those of you who are going to go see Ant Man later this year. You'll see that character first time in real life. Um, there's a Gil Scott for my personal. Uh, my personal taste is a Gil Scott Heron bio that I'm curious about as well, and uh, a Ric Flair spy comic from Scout. <laughs> I love Ric Flair. <laughs> Actually, can we talk about the the non reinvention reinvention of Ric Flair in the last couple of years? Yeah, please. Because this has been something that's kind of like it just started started to notice recently, right? I guess he left WWE a couple of years ago, and then he just started mm -hmm. hanging out with Bad Bunny. Yeah, they're, they're friends for some reason in Miami. In Miami, right. Yeah. <laughs> and now, like, I, I started following his Instagram. His Instagram is just like him being like a trap lord. Okay, it's funny <laughs> it's that you say thing. that because in my mind, with just like the littlest bit of information I had about his friendship with Bad Bunny, right. I was like, is this Ric Flair's like second life as a kingpin? Right. <laughs> like, legit. Is. Like, as a Miami drug lord? I don't know. Miami <laughs> trap lord at the very least. But yeah, I just want to point that out because Ric Flair has undergone this. It, it makes sense for Ric Flair. Oh, it in makes a way, perfect sense. You know, but at the same time, it's sort of like, wow, this is, he just, he's found a way to repackage himself, mm -hmm. but not repackage himself, but make it make sense for a whole new generation. Absolutely. And I'm kind of here for it. I don't know. That's the nature boy for That's you. That's the nature boy for you. So, <laughs> yeah, I just want to point that out. But there is a spy comic, speaking of reinvention, that he has with Scout Comics that's in the, uh, in the February catalog. Definitely check it out because I'm curious what it's going to be about exactly, besides him being a. A potential spy. I hope he's just running around like, woo! I mean, that would make him a really bad spy, I think. <laughs> Announcing <laughs> his arrival. <laughs> Maybe. It might make him a bad spy. It might be also entertaining. But yeah, check that out. Of course, previous catalog is in comic shops today. Uh, so you can pick it up. Just ask your retailer uh, where that. Be when like, do hey. I get to be in focus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ronnie, you got to jump in here and say that. And she's a... Uh, She's suffering from the fuzzies. I, it's real distracting, and I keep <laughs> seeing it, and I'm like, is it me? Do Am I just, Are you just smudged? Yeah. You might be smudged. You might be a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. Um, but yeah, check that out. Uh, and also, freezeworld.com slash catalog. You can look at the catalog, the entire catalog. It's not as cute and pretty as this, but you can still look through the entire catalog on our website mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and I'll get a point out there's also a digital version that you can also pick up, freezeworld.com slash digital. Just uh, go ahead and read it on your tablet if you want to. And that's enough lip service about us. Let's talk about some comics. <laughs> uh, so Ash has got her pick this week, I've mm -hmm. got my pick this week, and then we're going to show you some toys. So let's get into it. Here's New Release Wednesday in a nutshell. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, you spoiled it. Whoopsies. <laughs> Man, Johnny's just looking at us shaking his head. <laughs> like, he's like, I leave these kids alone for five seconds. Anyway. Can't do anything right. Well, you know, then I guess I'll go first. <laughs> Riley, <laughs> Riley decided who goes first. Um, Ninja Funk, number three, is out, right? So I don't think I picked number two when it came out, but I have been still reading the series. Yeah, you did pick number I one for I definitely sure. picked number one because yeah. I thought it was a cool premise. Uh, I was really happy to find out that the book delivered mm -hmm. on its random plot Perfect. description. That's what I love. <laughs> it fully embraces the random randomness, and I really enjoy that about it. Um, it's basically about a small crew of DJ DJs who are out to save the universe from being <laughs> off-key. Remember oh, this? Oh, I remember. Remember this? <laughs> right. Uh, meanwhile, there's a separate rival crew of DJs who are kind of like sellouts that are trying to stop them from saving the universe. It's great. It's 100% it's, it's, like it's entertaining. <laughs> Okay. But also, if you could show that cover again, Riley, it is absolutely gorgeous David Mack cover. Yeah, I like the hair and like the flowers. That is a phenomenal David Mack cover, and I think he's done every single cover so far. So, yeah, that's from Whatnot Publishing. Um, this is the second to last issue, and definitely ask your little comment oh, about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only four issues. 
visually, just visually in general, not just the cover, because David Mack doesn't do the insides, okay. but just j just visually in general, the book is really cool. Mm -hmm. And the other, one of the visual elements of the book is that it's interactive. So there are just moments where there's like a needle drop mm -hmm. in the comic itself. And oh, that's you get cool. to, there's like a little QR code in the middle of the label of the record. And so you can listen to the song while you're reading, which I think is just absolutely love fantastic. That. I love that. Um, but yeah, Ninja, Ninja Funk, number three. Check it out. And Ninja Funk is a real group, by the way. Is it really? It's a real group. I was yeah. wondering that too. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I think I forgot to mention that the first time. They are an actual group, a DJ, and I think actually one of them is a former comic shop owner or a current comic Love shop that. owner. Love uh, that. Shout they're, out. They're a DJ group, and like, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of Major Lazer. I think that's probably the best way I can describe it. Um, but yeah, check it out and check out the music because I think this is really cool, and I've had a great time reading this. So. They should make like a Spotify. They actually, I think it, I think uh, I think it takes you to Spotify when you do the QR codes. Nice. I think it does. No, it takes you to their website, but I think they're also is okay. Spotify. Anyway. Said that with a lot of confidence for someone that uses Apple Music, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> if you want to make an Apple Music playlist, that'd be bomb. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure they're actually on Apple Music. <laughs> I'm not sure though, but like, yeah. Um, definitely check it out. What is your pick this week, Ashley? Oh, I'm excited. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just remembered what it was. I just remembered what it was. My pick this week is Archie versus the world. Look, this is everything I love. I love <laughs> post-apocalyptic, dystopian, hot messes, mm -hmm. and I like Archie. Mm -hmm. So we're going to mush them together into this. Yes. Um, so <laughs> we talked about this many weeks ago when Archie first announced they were doing this book. Mm -hmm. Finally out there in the wild. It's got, I think, three covers for the first, for the number one. Um, I picked cover B because the selling point here is really sexy, Archie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very important point. Okay, fair enough. Um, and one, I do appreciate sexy Archie, but two, I think it's important to mention that this is not your normal Archie Andrews that's like totally lost, like doing things without direction I mean, and is completely clueless. He's about it. <laughs> he is about it. He's you got this souped up jalopy that I'm sure Betty has fixed oh, for him. Is. He's traveling with Jughead as he always does. Um, and he's setting off to fight his like uh, apparently like evil mirror image in the form of Reggie. So like, you got to at least keep some through lines, which is yeah, Archie yeah. is always beefing with Reggie. Always beefing with Reggie, right? Uh, it's very Mad Max. If you can't tell yes. from the cover, that's the whole jam. Uh, we have preview pages up on our website right now. If you mm. want to check it out before you go buy it, I urge you to do so because I was looking at them earlier this week, and the very first preview page is Archie just like throttling somebody full <laughs> oh, chokehold. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not your, ma not your grandma's Archie. Not though. your grandma's Archie. You heard it here first. I mean, we're past that point at this point. I think yeah. we've had uh, quite a few, uh, maybe slightly jarring interpretations of, of Archie for grandma. Oh, yes. So. <laughs> ah, yes, the sex bunker. Right, back to the sex bunker, exactly. Feel the need to remind you every couple months. <laughs> for, for, for the record, that's an episode of Riverdale. Okay, let's just be clear about that. Anyway, all right, cool. So Archie versus the world. Mm -hmm. All right, that's how this mm -hmm. was number one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here for the mad yes. maxification of Archie. Me too. I was sitting I'm here like it. it is called Archie versus the world. My mm -hmm. brain is just like sexy Archie. <laughs> <laughs> just call it sexy Archie. You guys yeah, go into your too. comic shop and be like, I'm looking for sexy Archie, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, let's get into collectibles, right? So yeah. your local comic shop, of course, is not just for comics, right? There's toys, statues, et cetera, et cetera, there as mm -hmm. well. You would know that if you picked up this month's preview catalog. But here's Natasha to show you what's available in the toy aisle of your local comic shop. Natasha here and I'm going to give you a look at some of the new toys and collectibles in stores today. Here's your previous toy chest for the week of January 25th, Didn't get enough? Want to see more? Then head over to PreviousWorld.com slash catalog to see what's available for pre-order at your local comic shop. 
Oh All my right. gosh. Boy, whatever. Where I leave, was like, we're going back. And I was like, okay, we're going back. And I was just sitting here like, <laughs> like staring at the ceiling. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's not even your fault. And my brain was like, all right, get ready. And my body was like, nope. Nope, nope don't even do it. Decline. Um, well, you better get ready because it's almost news time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> all right, let's get into some <laughs> Do you want a bobby pin? All right, maybe I do want a bobby pin. I'm complaining about my hair. This is all new to me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Troy has hit, hair. I'm finally hit the point where I'm like, how do I manage this anymore? So, and it's just going to get crazier. Anyway. Okay. That's uh, that. There's your new set. That's the news. <laughs> <laughs> Troy has a hair problem. <laughs> Bad hair day. Anyway, what's going on in the world of comics? Uh, DC. DC is having a week. Okay. this week a good one or a bad one uh i think it's a good one it okay. sounds pretty cool to me i'm, I'm <laughs> with it uh okay so they're launching their dawn of dc era this week with action comics 1051 mm. uh which came out today yesterday whatever right. um and that kind of shakes up the entire formatting of the action comics line the action comics mm -hmm. title how those stories are told uh, so it'll be transitioning into more of an anthology series. So this first issue, uh, again, 1051, was written by Philip Kennedy Johnson with uh, art from Rafa Sandoval, and it takes all of the members of the super family, or most of the members, I should say, uh, re-costumes them, which is interesting. No mm. more capes. Everyone is capeless, apparently. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Um, which is crazy. A, capes, cape, a cape is, like, kind of the main thing I associate with a superhero. So oh, right. it's, it's odd that they would make that choice. Interesting. Um, and they also loaded it with two backup stories, so this is obviously a, an oversized issue. Mm -hmm. um, Lois and Clark 2 and Power Girl Reborn are your backup stories here. Uh, and there's also a ton of other DC books out this week. I feel like we'd be here for a while if I went down the whole list, but mm -hmm. the one I do want to point out is Catwoman number 51. Oh, yeah. Uh, because the mantle of Catwoman is going to be passed from Selena Kyle to some unnamed newcomer. Oh, okay. Uh, and she'll be getting her own one-off in Batman One Bad Day. Okay, interesting. All right, I didn't even realize that was a thing, but yeah, let me check that out as well. I'm, I'm all for the the, the anthology. No well, just the anthology ness <laughs> of action comics. I think that that's makes sense. Probably a missed opportunity that finally someone mm -hmm. recognizes is probably a good idea. I think they should do the same thing for Detective Comics, just Ooh, make it about the okay. Bat Family. Period. Right. And make it a bunch of short stories, um, and hopefully it's a good bang for your buck. I don't know what the price point on, is on it, but like, yeah, I think. Yeah, just mm -hmm. uh, just do make action comics like a big super family book. And yeah, just kind of like have fun with that, and like you know, give people little little bits here and there. I just feel like that's more in the. It's actually part of the book's history that it was an anthology, in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. So yeah, I'm very curious. Mystical Green Beanie has been talking up Philip Kennedy Johnson's um, action comics run for a good mm, while. Okay. He's been telling me to read it. I went out, I went and got the previous issues, so I will report back. Oh good. What I think, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to get to. 1051, right? Yeah. Uh, Soon-ish. So, yeah, check that out. Ish. <laughs> what else is going on in the news? Uh, more drama at Heavy Metal. Uh -oh. They can't seem to quite catch a break. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, you know, we've talked about them before, because like I said, they haven't really been able to catch a break. They've been going through some shakeups. They've had some, you know, financial yes. issues. They were recently acquired by Whatnot Publishing. Uh, and now they have a new CEO or some CEO drama. Their previous CEO, Matthew Medney, stepped down, uh, and they're replaced by Myth founder Marshall Lees, which is a web myth, if you're not familiar, is a web 3.0 fantasy community. I even had to look that up. I was oh, like, what okay. in the world is myth? Uh -huh. um, so, so Medney stepped down on his own. He wasn't, you know, forced out. Mm -hmm. uh, so he released a, a statement about leaving, and he said, you know, it's quite long, but you know, to hit the high points, he said, it's time for me to focus on creative endeavors, including my own intellectual properties and let heavy metal be guided by someone who soaks in the excitement from the business building that is needed from this plateau to bring it forward. I will be stepping into my role as partner in the business and cheering one and helping in important projects and relationships. Yeah. So, seems like no bad blood. No, 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 I mean, that's probably the best outcome, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's been, from a consumer perspective, there's been some, uh, some issues with the uh, with heavy metal, mm -hmm. and like that. Some of that is some of that is you know we love we always talk about the culture war. Some of that is a little bit of culture war stuff. Right. Some of that is <coughs> uh, kind of boiled down to, hey, I didn't get my subscription this month. You know, right. I mean, just stuff like that. 
Um, and I think maybe addresses some of that in his uh, expl- his, uh, right. his statement. Uh, you know, I, me personally, I, heavy metal has had some interesting starts and stops the last few years, mm-hmm. and some of which I have I was upset to see end. Okay. Because they had some really cool stuff, like they were building a larger universe with Tarna, and they mm-hmm. were doing this book called Entropy, um, yeah. with um, with Christopher Priest. The Grant Morrison did a the Savage Sword of Jesus Christ <laughs> comic. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like he was the editor in chief. Full sin. Yeah, no, it was, it was full sin. It was. <laughs> um, and I don't even know what happened to that book. Like, I mean, like, I, I don't know what happened. It just to disappeared. Time. It just kind of disappeared. So, you know, hopefully we're going to see some shift out of it with whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, there'll be a direction of just sort of like, hopefully not abandoning these concepts right. entirely. Because that would be great to see, especially entropy. I was very curious about that. Yeah, I remember you picking that, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, it just, you know, I think it got to maybe two issues. And then, like, I don't know what happened. So... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but check it out. Uh, actually, number one from whatnot, heavy metal number one from whatnot is in comic shop soon. I actually think it might be this month, or maybe it's in the it might be in this catalog. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, keep an eye on that because that's the February catalog. Yeah, I think it might be in the February think, catalog. Yeah. Um, but keep an eye on that because that's going to be kind of like mm-hmm. the, the bold new era for them, mm-hmm. and it'll give you an indication of maybe where things are going. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in catalog. I'm going to look that up while we while we're off camera. Okay. Um, Let's jump over to, oh, we, you know, we talked about D&D last week, right? Yes. Like I said, clearly I'm not a D&D person. I own a few cards because they looked cool. Sure, <laughs> And that's yeah. about it. <laughs> uh, that said, there's a new Dungeons & Dragons trailer yeah. for the movie. And I just really am into this. Like there's something about this just really speaks to me. And I don't know what it is. Dude, the casting could not be better. It's I think I said cast. this the first time, but I just need to say it again. Mm-hmm. No, the casting is it's a great cast, and it seems like a lot of fun. And I know some people are like kind of saying, oh, it's two Guardians of the Galaxy. I know that's a conversation yeah. people are having. But I, I don't know. Like, this is my outsider perspective. Right. But this is also based off of the things I know from my friends who do play mm-hmm. collectible card games, like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Right. Uh, and it's giving me this game night atmosphere. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like, Every person is a little a character into themselves, and they, mm-hmm. you know, is it more. It seems more of a, a, you know, like Friday night. The other thing playing D and D. Yeah, the thing I like about it is it doesn't feel gatekeepy with something no, like Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. where you need so much information to be able to do it successfully yeah. and like play the game. Uh, this could have very easily and quickly became like a super niche movie for a very specific audience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it didn't. No. And it's got a lot of people excited about it. it and does. it seems like you'll be able to watch it and have a good time without knowing anything about how to play the game. Mm-hmm. And you know what, look, I'm not a, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, again, I'm an outsider. Yeah. You know, but uh, I forgot what I was going to say. But <laughs> I'm an well, outsider. Well, you're an outsider, I'm and an that's outsider. all we know. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's really cool. Part of me was wondering if this was strategic because of some of the stuff we talked about last week. Mm, the timing the is. The timing of it was. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know how fast people can make trailers these days. Woo! <laughs> but I am definitely here for it. I don't know if that is some sort of betrayal of the nerd community to be excited about this right now, but I am definitely a fan. And you know, it's interesting, not knowing much about it, I, I recognize certain aspects of this that right. from just like popular culture, like, oh, yeah. that's from D&D, that's from D&D, I know these things. So I also called it a card game earlier. I'm sorry. That is magic. And that was a bad, bad decision I just did. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. I was trying to, I, I, I. You kind of looked at me like, what? I caught it and I didn't want to, I didn't want to well actually you yeah, right, right. In, in real time. It's okay. It's all right. I'll accept it. It's totally fine. <laughs> you probably <laughs> left it. <laughs> I had a moment, as I said, I was like, damn it. They got me. And I'm just going to apologize again. I was like, I'm just going to say that I'm an outsider again, just so people understand. Um, all right, let's get into some, some more drama here. I love drama. I love other people's drama. Other people's drama. Not my personal drama, mm-hmm. other people's drama. Comicsology, I, you mm. know, uh, this is kind of wild, right? Like, yeah. uh, you were talking mm. about you were going to do a little bit of research on it. Did you, what did you find? Uh, I mean, it, uh, weirdly enough, mm. like, and I didn't do extensive research. I think mm. that's the first thing I should say. So mm. I did kind of like some basic research, and the main thing I realized was like, this seems to be a big deal that everyone's upset about with relatively little information available. Yeah. Uh-huh. I read a couple articles. In comics? Are you getting me? <laughs> I know, but I was like, I was, I was thinking maybe because it's Amazon that like there yeah. would be more information, but right. I, all the articles I read were the same thing. Some of them were even citing the beat. And I was like, what, what, why? Hmm. Why? Like, I guess I don't understand what the cloak and dagger is about. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's, uh, you know, this is one of those things. I actually think that's actually the conversation I want to have about this because okay. I feel like the actual news story itself, the same thing you said, yeah. was pretty cut and dry. Like, yeah. unfortunately, and I want to be very clear about that, people got laid off from comiXology. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that personally, this is just my perspective, but last year, um, comiXology, I'm sorry, uh, Amazon kind of pushed comiXology over into the Kindle side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazon owns both companies. They own right. Kindle, of course, and they own comiXology. And so when they made that shift, me personally, and I know people probably expect us to bash comiXology, yeah. I'm not gonna do that, truthfully, because I use yeah. comiXology, I like legit do. It's how I decide whether or not I wanna read something and collect it, truthfully. Right, which is actually, that's what Heidi said in her article on yeah. The Beat as well. Like, comiXology has served largely to be additive because yeah. like comics are, very much a tactile hobby. Very much so, yeah. So it just, yeah, it does that exact thing. You read it, you're like, yo, this is dope. I want to keep reading this, and mm -hmm. then you add it to your, your pull list. No, you know, actually, Punisher, and this is an aside, but the Punisher series, mm -hmm. that was the series I read four issues of, and then I was like, called up my comic shop, and I was like, hey, add this to my pull list, because I see this being really, really good. Yeah. Like, you know, and I want the actual issue. And then I went on a whole hunt for the first four <laughs> issues. Nice. Again, you know? <laughs> um, but anyway, I like, yeah, I, you know, they shifted over about a year ago to Kindle. It hasn't been great. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a little few hiccups, which you know is expected with this technology stuff, mm -hmm. and especially when you're shifting over. Uh, but you know, there's this notion I think in geek culture, and we've seen saw a little bit even with uh, the Wizard of the Coast stuff last mm -hmm. week too. Not saying right or wrong about that, but that the minute something changes, oh, this is the death of it. Right. You know, and. I don't know, like, I just kind of feel like, I don't know, there's, there's something, I don't know, there's some sort of cultural thing in us that's just like, defeatist. that's just very much bracing for the worst at yeah. all possible times. And I saw these all, of course, there were a bunch of YouTube videos of people mm. talking about, like, oh, the death of comicsology, the death of comicsology. It's not dead, guys. It's part of the Kindle store. The Kindle store is like almost its own ecosystem. It is its own ecosystem, truthfully. Yeah. And I'm sure that it makes plenty of money for, for, uh, for Amazon. And so it's going to be around. It's just not the way that we used to see it. Yeah. It's interesting that that's kind of the first take about Comixology going yeah. away or getting merged with Kindle, that it, it had like this sky is falling approach. And mm -hmm. I, I understand that nerds in general have that outlook yeah. kind of across the board. <laughs> I, I know that it's not <laughs> right specific to this. It is, right. it is the general outlook. But mm -hmm. to me, my kind of knee-jerk reaction was, this is great because it may it puts comics in the same conversation as traditional literature and traditional books mm. and you find them in the same place as you find traditional books and maybe some people don't want their comics part of the mainstream That's good but point. i think it it is valuable because it gives comics that legitimacy that it is they've been fighting forever since their mm. inception mm. to have mm. no you know i mean that's a valid point i didn't even think about that but adding it to the kindle store uh, you know, puts them in direct uh, eye view mm -hmm. of people who would be picking up, I don't know, like Harry Potter or something. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, that's a very valid point. And maybe that's the perspective. Um, I kind of always expected inevitably that Amazon was going to merge Comixology into Kindle. Mm, like really? the Kindle store. It just seemed like something that, I, mm -hmm. like, I felt like that would ultimately was always going to be the end game. Okay. It's like, you know, and I'm actually was kind of surprised that they ever had a separate app for it. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. I was like, I'm surprised, but I appreciated yeah. it because I didn't sure. want to be fully entrenched in the Amazon with the Amazon apps. Like, yeah. I kind of am sick of having like Amazon stuff right now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just thought that was really interesting that they decided to do that. So we'll see. I just yeah, it's not the death of it. It's uh, you know, I think the the key thing here is there are people in the industry who need jobs. Yeah. And you know, maybe people should start taking a look at that. Like you know, like see who see who's available. And I've seen some people do a little bit of that on Twitter and whatnot. Like. Off, sh offering up uh, job postings and stuff, which I think is good. Nice. So, yeah, you know, proof that the comic industry isn't all fatalistic. Sometimes people lend a helping, a helping hand. So, um, all right, let's jump into the trailer. So, this is Trident from Battle Quest Comics, uh, and when we come back, I'll show you a little bit more about it. Let's go.
Here we go. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Was it just the audio or like, or are we? Yeah, just... it was just the audio. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, audio guys. clipped yeah, out we, for some reason. We were badly stalling because our audio dropped off, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, that was Trident of Aurelia. Uh, it was in the December catalog, but it's coming mm -hmm. out February 22nd at your local comic shop. But it's still time to pre-order that, and that's from Battle Quest Comics. Uh, the description of this book goes like this. From the mind of two-time 2022 Hugo Award-winning Lee Moyer comes a new fantasy adventure that takes place below the sea. A long-abandoned trident calls out to a drowning woman named Oriana. As she grabs the trident, Oriana's life and the lives of those both above and below the waves will change forever. So hmm. definitely high fantasy, probably a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a Little Mermaid, Atlantean type thing going on there as well. Uh, but yeah, check that out, February 22nd, Hidden Comic Shops. And you can find mm. more from Battle Quest Comics by going to preseworld.com slash catalog. Uh, we got comments. comments. Yeah, we got a couple I like, comments I was like, here. What is the word for people who say things? <laughs> wow. <laughs> the art looks fantastic on the trailer. Oh, battle, oh yeah, uh, Trident of Aurelia. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great cover, actually, by uh, it's, uh, the, sh the website Curtis Lee Moyer, actually. So he's hmm. a writer and wow. artist in a lot of ways, yeah. Busy man. Mm-hmm. This was from uh, when we were talking about uh, Ashton's fic. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he says, I think if I walked to a comic shop and said, I'm looking for sexy Archie, uh, there would be a lot of raised hands. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got a good comic shop then. I guess so. A hip and have been comic shop. I need to go there. Not recommended to go into a comic shop and ask for Who sexy also Archie. Also said, yes, barbarians. Oh, okay, from Mighty Barbarians. Yeah, that actually sounded like a lot of fun. I'm going to check that out myself. I love when we read our comments with absolutely no context. Oh, right, yeah. Yes, barbarians. <laughs> like, when we read them later after we've already finished discussing that thing, it's just like, yes, barbarians. It's like, what? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I think it was like one a couple of weeks ago. We were just like, wait, what was this in reference to? <laughs> yeah. It happens all the time. Um, all right, back to the fun part of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, asinine arguments with Ashton. Mm -hmm. Asinine arguments with mm -hmm. Ashton. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, this week's topic, I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, it has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with comic books and no. nothing to do with pop culture. Oh. Um, what is this about then? It is a would you <laughs> rather question. What else is there? <laughs> it's a would you rather question mm -hmm. that I've been thinking about for days now. Um, so I need, I need other people to weigh in. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? All right, I feel like there's always an origin story to these questions. <laughs> Please explain to me where this came from. Uh, you know what? Um, there's a football player on the Baltimore Ravens that hosts a podcast that's mm -hmm. just like absolutely off the rails every single week, similar to our show. Okay. And he asked one of his guests this question, and the guest was like so completely floored by it, as was I. <laughs> and then I spent three days thinking about it. And then I was like, I'm determined to make this everybody else's problem. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Horse sized duck. <laughs> I just want to say, by the way, yeah. this is such a classic question. I love this question. This and I actually pulled up, I remembered this from back when I was surfing the internet. Uh -huh. Someone drew an excellent painting <gasps> of the, the, the decision, the choice. the choice. He's making his choice between the hundred <laughs> duck-sized duck horses, horses and the horse-sized duck. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I like a, a horse-sized duck now. You know, my initial instinct was horse-sized duck sounds Terrifying. It does. Because ducks can be That's mean. a big bird. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to say I would rather fight the horse-sized duck. I'm sorry, the 100 duck-sized horses. Because, yeah, that, that, I'm glad you had the, the, <laughs> I'm glad you had the, the, the footage. Well, I think it's, yeah, it helps visualize what we're talking right. about The here. visual evidence <laughs> to support me. Oh, that, now, that duck's ready to square up, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so actually when I lived in Columbia, there are definitely ducks around the lake. Yeah. And I don't know, I always had this moment of fear once I crossed them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you don't want to, you're not, you're not gunning for the ducklings in any particular way. Like, you know, right. but they tend to just take up space and get in your way. Yeah. And sometimes when you're trying to walk around the lake, like they are in your direct path. And mm -hmm. you're just sort of like, oh crap, I'm too close to these little ducks. I'm gonna, this is the day. This yeah. is the day. Mama ducks are defensive. I'm gonna get pecked. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get pecked to death. And it's not gonna, it's gonna be a stupid death. <laughs> and it's gonna suck. So yeah, uh, ducks in general are terrifying, but uh, one horse sized <laughs> duck, I don't know. 
one horse-sized duck could do some damage. It could. It absolutely could. So I'm going to go with that. What about you, Riley? Uh, you know, I don't know. Because I agree with you that <laughs> ducks are kind of, they got like a little bit of a, a fear factor to them. They do, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I don't know. I think uh, I think I would take the horses as well. We actually have a couple of comments, uh, comments okay, weighing yes, in here. A <laughs> hundred mini horses mm. can't be easy. What's the dick? What's the duck really going <laughs> to do against me? Apologies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was actually going to say earlier. I was like, I, I like is like something about the phrasing of this is real easy to say a bunch of bad I, words. I can't believe I just did that That's on okay. the internet That's for right. people to uh, to hear. Boy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I kind of agree. What's the duck going to do? I don't know. What's the horse size duck? Yeah. A uh. hundred mini horses. My concern with the mini horses is like they're little and you could start kicking, but like it's so many of them. Yeah. No, I mean, that's true. Like it's a volume issue for me. Well, I mean, you could get trampled by them, couldn't you? Like you get overtaken at one point. If they could get you off your feet. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they just start, let me like, let's say you kick one and then they just, they just storm you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that could be also pretty horrifying. Annie like says that she loves horses. She wouldn't fight them. Nope. Okay, That's so ducks for Annie, guys. And also said that she'd shoot the duck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> okay, Annie. I feel like we just learned a lot about you. I know, right? Unexpected <laughs> twist. <laughs> all right. I mean, all right. So let's see here. One horse-sized duck. Is that a... I think let's go with the... I would rather fight the 100 ducks. Okay, horses. let's see. I think, I think that sense. makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, that is that is Ooh. overwhelmingly the popular choice. Okay, all right. I guess it just makes sense. A big, it's it's easier to fight a bunch of smaller things than right than one big than thing. One, right? Yeah. I mean, it's also a possibility. Like, wait, ducks can't fly, right? Yes, they can. Oh, they can't fly. Okay, what's the one that can't fly? Penguins. Penguins can't fly. There you go. Sorry, um, I was just thinking to myself, it's like they could just take off with you attached <laughs> at any given moment. Oh my God. Like Appa, but not. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Just take off. Or worse, like you've seen, you've seen the duck mouth before, right? It's kind of disturbing. Oh, their teeth? Yeah, Duck disturbing. teeth are scary. They're scary. Mm -mm. Yeah, okay, so... All right, I'm, that's that's just my perspective. If this was geese, I would be... I'm afraid of geese. Geese are also a problem. Geese, geese are, are way, way scarier than yeah. They're so yeah. mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are mean. They're a bunch of jerks. Stupid geese. I tried to help a, a goose cross the road one time. It had like crossed the road halfway and stopped and was like holding up traffic. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like a joke backwards or something. It's just like I tried to help a, a goose cross the road. I did. <laughs> Actually, it was a gander, which was way worse. It was way worse, a gander. Yeah. Like, were you just like, were you like, like the patrol, the patrol, uh, the bus patrol kids? Like, you were just like, this way, this way. <laughs> I was trying to be, but that goose, that goose tried to fight me. I believe it. And uh, it didn't want anything to do with me. I was like, fine, get hit and left because I didn't want to be involved. <laughs> I love that. I actually had a whole beef with this goose. All right. <laughs> I was just trying to help. Hilarious. I that just is was too trying funny. to get it out of the street and it wanted to fight me. <laughs> How long ago was this? This, I, w I was, you know, old enough to know better. <laughs> so this was last year. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. All right. Let's jump over to Shop <laughs> Shout Out. <laughs> At least try to. There's something hilarious about that. I don't know what it is. I uh, just wanted to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's your lesson. Like, no good deed, Ash. No right. good deed. Especially when you're dealing with uh, with ducks and geese. Yeah. There you go. Uh, what is this week's Comic Shop Shout Out? <laughs> this week's Comic Shop Shout Out. <clears throat> excuse me. This week's Comic Shop Shout Out. Let me be serious. Uh, goes to Coliseum of Comics in Orlando, Florida. They're celebrating 40 years in business. Mm -hmm. Awesome. They started in 1983. Um, and they have 12 locations. They're something of a chain. We don't really use the word chain to discuss comic book shops because they're all, you know, independently owned and operated. That's but true, yeah. 12 locations is... That's a chain. That's a chain, that's I would say. I'd say, why not? We got, uh, you know, we got a little mini chain here at... Third Eye. Yeah, yeah and Collector's one, Corner. just open one in collect yeah, and, uh, and Collector's Corner, so mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, comic shop shout-out for mm -hmm. this week. Yep. Mr. Spiel. 
Yep, we'll show you some pictures inside of Coliseum of Comics during the credit roll. You can check out their shop. If you want us to shout out your local comic book shop on the show, find us on social media, tag your shop. If they don't have a handle, just leave their name and use the hashtag support your LCS or find your local comic book shop, shout them out on the show and give them some love. All right. And uh, here is your reminder to like, follow, and subscribe. You can hang out with me over at Previews World. You can hang out with Ashton over at... Free Comic Book Day. And that's uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. TikTok. You've got TikTok. We don't yeah. have the TikToks, but she's got the TikTok. She's got the case of the TikTok. <coughs> Um, and uh, YouTube, of course. You might be watching mm -hmm. some YouTube or Twitch right now. Um, and, of course, Facebook as well. Uh, real quick, I wanted to remind people that there are always cool things on pre 